Now, our passage today is from the, from the letter of Paul to the Hebrew church, to the Hebrews. And in chapter 13, it says, Never let your brotherly love fail, or your sisterly love, or your sibling love, nor refuse to extend, extend your hospitality to strangers. Sometimes we have entertained angels unaware. Think constantly of those in prison as if you were prisoners at their side. Think too of all who suffer as if you shared their pain. And that's what this sermon is about today. It's called The Sacred Servant. And this story of Samuel that I, Samuel that I told to the children earlier, it's the story of a very young boy dedicated by his family to the temple there. Now, I know some of you have had some teenagers that wish you, you wish you could have dedicated to somebody, right? Somebody, please take this child, right? But that was Jewish tradition. That was Hebrew tradition in this time was if they would dedicate one of their children in service to the temple. That's where Samuel was, eight years old, taking care of the priest named Eli, taking care of the things that needed to be done at the church. And Eli was an older man. He was blind. He needed a lot of help, and Samuel was right there. Now, Samuel had no choice about being dedicated as a servant in the temple. His parents made that decision for him. Children were property at that point. But Samuel did have a choice when God spoke to Samuel. And once Samuel understood that it was God who was calling him, his answer was, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening, Lord. Samuel already, at eight years of age, had an attitude of service. He had in his character, it was built into him to care for other people. How many of you know an eight-year-old? Cindy, you're married to one, but... I Right? You, you think about your grandchildren. Think about your children at eight years of age. Right? Some of them already have that characteristic, right? They're already concerned about other people. They're already walking around seeing what they can do for other people. And so this is Samuel. This is the character of Samuel to do the work that was required to keep the temple functioning. And Samuel's work that he did in the temple then is very, very much, it's almost exactly like the work that we do here to keep this congregation running. And there are those of you here who have that same character that Samuel had. God's sacred servant, Samuel. You're just like Samuel. You're always looking around to see what needs to be done. Who needs help? Where can I serve? What can I do? You folks are fulfilling that scripture in 1 John that says, Children, let's not just love with our words. Let's love with our actions and our deeds. And there are people sitting right now in these pews next to you or across the aisle from your, you who, who dedicate time in their day every single day to pray for you and me. That's an act of service. Uh, how many of you know who Charlotte is? Charlotte, Miss Charlotte's not here this morning. You know who Charlotte is? Charlotte is uh, she's an African-American. She was here last night. She has a walker. Right? All right. Um, how many of you have been prayed over by Miss Charlotte? I'm going to tell you something. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to just blow you down, and, and, and I, I can't even describe the prayers of that woman. Every single day she prays for this church. She spends hours of her day in prayer for each of you, whether she knows your name or not. It's just incredible to me. That's her ministry. That's what she does in sacred service to her Lord. When God said, Charlotte, Charlotte, 
she said, I'm listening, Lord. Tell me what to do. And I know that many of you, you know, Max, we, we, there's always something, right? When you have a house, there's always something that needs to be fixed. Always. It's just how it is. And when you think you've got everything fixed, something you broke first, you fixed first is broke again. And so, you know, the sound system, we've worked very hard to, to create a sound and light system and a streaming system that, first of all, can reach people who can't get here, reach people outside of here. You know, one of the members of our church uh, is in Boise, Idaho. He's listening right now. Chris? All right. He listens every Sunday. He, he texts me or emails me right after the service. It's wonderful. Chris is a member of this church from Boise, Idaho, because your money made it possible for that camera and that software and all that equipment so that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ and never have to leave our seats. And so I'm not going to talk to you about the air conditioner right now. <clears throat> but we're going to be having a fundraiser in the fall when it's not hot anymore. We're going to have a fundraiser in the fall. Um, it, those of you who are interested in helping me organize that, we're going to build a fence around the playground, which needs to be done. The insurance company says we need a fence. So, okay, we're going to build a fence, but we're going to sell fence panels that you can buy in honor of a loved one. We're also going to have a path, a brick path, and you can buy bricks in honor of a loved one. And whatever proceeds we get from that, we're going to buy a new air conditioner because this little, this little unit right outside here, it was born in 2008. She's working hard. She's working hard. And it's a train, so it's, it's a good quality. It's working hard. Um, but but we, need some, we need an upgrade there. All right? I hate asking for money. <laughs> I hate it. But it's just part of what we do, right? It's part of our sacred service. And so I'm grateful for those of you because you don't have to. You don't have to do it. And I know that you do it out of love and out of obedience to the Lord. You're living the scripture that's in Galatians chapter 6, the one that says, carry each other's burdens in this way, and you will fulfill the law of Christ when you throw a few extra dollars in the plate so that we can help somebody in our congregation get groceries so that they don't have to choose between groceries and medicine. You're carrying each other's burdens when you pray for each other, when you... Look at somebody and ask God to bless them. I mean, all of you have some part in making sure that this church is functioning. You are God's sacred servants doing God's sacred work on the east side of Fort Worth. You know, Samuel's not the only one in Scripture that we read about. There are hundreds of humans who served God in the Holy Scripture. Hundreds of people called to do the work that it takes to maintain the family of God. Think about the apostles that Jesus called, the twelve. The reason we even have the gospel is because of the work of those twelve when Jesus was gone from the earth. What you do is what they did. That line of servitude, that sacredness in the time that you spend making sure that this congregation is functional is the same thing that the early church did to even get us started. And I want you to recognize when I say sacred servant, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the call that God has put on your life to make sure that we are the hands and feet and the mouth and the money of Jesus Christ in this neighborhood. And y'all, we're blessed. We just have, I, I don't, I've never been in a church like this with so many people 
who are willing to do the things that need to be done. It's just incredible to me. But I also know that to whom much is given, much is expected. And that there's a little bit more, there's actually a lot more, but we're going to take it in little chunks that we can do for this neighborhood. Small little things. Details that make a difference in the lives of people who are struggling just to survive. And gratefully, God gives us, God gives us the encouragement that we need to do these things to answer God's call. In Hebrews, Paul tells us that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. All of the sacred, ser sacred servants who have gone before us are watching what we do now. They are witnessing to the angels about the work that's being done in this church. And Paul tells them, strip off everything that hinders you, even the sin that dogs at your feet, and run the race that's set before you with patience, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the source and the goal of our faith. Pray with me, please. God, we are grateful to you today. Lord, I, everything about what happens in this congregation, Lord, it just stirs up these feelings of gratitude and joy and thankfulness for the sacred service that's provided here, Lord, not just by a few, but by the many. And God, we have an abundance of people willing to do the work that it takes to share your gospel, to share the good news that we are loved and that we are forgiven. And so God, as we leave here today, we don't just leave our attitudes of sacred service here in the pews where we sit. God, we take those with us. Lord, for Linda Parker, who's sitting vigil right now with Bill, It's a sacred space. For the family of J.K. Ware, in grief, it's a sacred space, Lord. For our teachers this week who will stand in front of classrooms filled with children, some, some who haven't had breakfast, who may not have clean clothes or a place to sleep at night. That's a sacred, sacred space. God, for the heart of these people in this room and the people that are watching us online, Lord, you have given us this sacred space for us to be who you intended us to be, for us to flourish in your love and in your compassion. And so, God, as we leave here today, let us take that with us. The recognition that what we do is sacred. Help us to keep our eyes on you and to run this race that you've set before us. And all the people said, Amen.